Welcome to the Tantra and Yoga podcast. These podcasts are recorded live at Anuttara Ashram with Artemis and Bhairav in the Nishka Nation of Northern BC, Canada. They bring clarity to some of the fundamental questions by spiritual seekers along the path of awakening. Um, could you speak a little bit more about the spiritual ego, or like how you can kind of identify maybe traps where, yeah, like we might fall into that, or um, yeah, how to know that your mind's not tricking you into truth and it not really being that. The spiritual ego is the hardest one. It's like as you're as you're getting closer to truth, your mind really learns how to turn all of those old obvious stories into spiritual stories and so you don't catch yourself repeating your old conditioning because now you've got a spiritual spin on it and so it makes it harder to sniff out but one thing that my teacher Rupert says that I have found quite helpful at times is If there's an I that thinks that they don't get it or do get it, that that's an indication right there that that I can't be trusted. The one that's saying, I had a beautiful spiritual experience, or the one that says, I have lost it. There's no I that could have gained it or lost it, and there's no I that ever had a spiritual experience. For him, there's no such thing as spiritual experiences. There's just experience mind and spiritual ego says this was a spiritual experience and a good one this was not a spiritual experience and therefore a bad one but your true self doesn't have such distinction so that can be a way to smell it out quite quickly yeah Mm -hmm. (laughs) yeah you know we we go through life um With certain personalities, you know, like we're the funny one or the angry one, the irritated one. You know, we have all these things, all these different kind of facets of our life. And then we hear about spirituality and it's like, oh, finally, finally I I can like, like live. And, And it comes from a, I feel like from a pure intention but a misdirection of that pure intention. So then the minds, we start to attach to that or identify to the story that we're spiritual, that that me, I did this, that me, I can have this this experience. And, um, And especially if you're one that likes to tell about your experiences. That's why in some traditions, like in Tibetan Tantra, you never you never talk about the practices you're doing, unless some practices are more open, like like Namkai can talk about his Namdro practice, the prostrations and whatever, also sunny. But um, some practices are, are closed. Like when you get into teachings that are a little bit more um, esoteric, you can't talk about this at all. And you can never talk about what experiences you've had. And you'll never hear about them. You'll never hear one thing or another about that. In Indian spirituality, it's it's less rigid in a way, less regimented. But um, it's really good that we don't start getting caught up in um, telling others about what experience... Because actually... If it's ever happened to you that you've told somebody about a spiritual experience, you lose the power of it. It's only just a memory. Because you take that experience, this mind-blowing thing, you stood at the top of the mountain and you could see the earth in in all of her glory. And then you try to explain that to somebody and you fit that profound experience, possibly maybe that profound experience of God you fit that into this little box and it's no longer like it's 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 no longer like something that was profound and just becomes a story a story you like to tell possibly 
to appear special because we all want to be special in some way. We want to. We com- the mind does this. The mind compares itself to others. And so we always want to, um, or the mind always wants to appear better than the others. So then we, we have these experiences or whatever they are, these, even these profound things that happen. And then we like to um, share them for, um, for recognition. So sometimes uh, in, in saying all this, sometimes as well, we can't stop ourselves from saying these experiences. I just also, I got to play the devil's advocate here. I don't think that in sharing your spiritual experience, you will lose 100% of that blessing. There's a time and place to share these things. And I share that because I know some people who have been afraid to talk to me, uh, who's helping them with their meditation, about experiences that they've had. So sometimes we have to talk. Um, We don't need to fear that, like, Uh, We're going to lose that taste of something, but it's also very important to be attentive to why we're sharing it. Mm -hmm. If we're sharing it because we're hoping to get some guidance, if we're sharing it because we're we're in an intimate one-on-one situation, like my friend Rishi and I, we're always sharing things like this, but it's very pure. It's very pure. And I shouldn't say we're always, you know, once in a while it'll come up to help explain a point, to help help each other understand a perspective but it's not at all of this like oh he had that should i be concerned or or I, i'm going to share this story to show him that how much i've experienced there's a, a humility behind and a, and a desire to try to help each other but there's a very special relationship that's kind of required for that um in, in terms of peers and then i don't think you need to for me, I don't think you need to fear talking to Bhairav or I if something's happening in your meditation or if you've had a certain experience you want help understanding it. Likewise, I will talk to my teachers about experiences that I've had. And, and I will also sometimes talk to some of you to, to help explain something that I can't really put into words, but I can do my best to explain from my experience. Mm-hmm. And I would rather teach that way than teaching from something I've read or something I think that I understand from here. So it's not all, what he's saying is also true, but uh, it's not like you have to fear ever talking about it too. Yes. But I just also want to throw out, because I have a, I had a very wonderful or terrible, both, experience with my spiritual ego to the point that I was in a spiritual community and I and the people thought that I was enlightened and it's incredibly embarrassing now when I look back on it (laughs) But, but I can tell you that this one that that lived there and through that at that time felt that they were here to help everyone you know, I, people were also claiming that they got a hug from me and then they felt this light and things like this. But there was this part of me that was like, I'm sharing this because I'm helping people. I'm sharing this because I'm bringing more light into this person's life. And I was telling myself that this was all being done to help others. When in actuality, it was making me feel pretty good about myself. Mm-hmm. I, I liked hearing these stories and I can tell you that the teachers that I've been intimate, like close with, they're not saying that they're sharing it to help others. They're not trying to be anyone. They don't judge whether they're doing well or not based on their likes on Instagram or how many comments they got on something, you know, or even how many people continue to come. I know some great teachers who refuse to have websites and refuse to put themselves out there at all. And they just want the close five people who continue to come. So, and not to, I also have teachers like Muji Baba who are on YouTube and Instagram and Facebook. And that's also wonderful. But uh, it's very important to check in with this one that thinks that they're sharing to help people or they're, they're sharing to, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, intention is very important. And, yeah, the story that we have around it. 
I'm a healer, or I'm a helper, or I'm enlightened and I have enlightening things to share with people. Yeah. Mm. But I also partially feel that that the spiritual ego is, um, yeah, it's so close to to us, you know, it, it, it mimics us, it, our true self, let's say. So, so it can be hard to dissect between the two. And for me personally, this doesn't mean this is the only way, but for me personally, the checking in with the eye and the commentary mm. is the fastest way to chop through it. Mm. Um, but on the other side of things, there's also the path of, of not necessarily that this is your way, but of having a guru because this creates humility. And, and I, I see this in other friends of mine of like, how could I ever be anything special when I have a master like this in my life? How can I share yoga? How can I even expect any of my experiences to mean anything compared to I live in his shadow or her shadow? So that, you know... And maybe even a dance between these two things is a way that we we sniff out the ego. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for joining us in our Q&A for today. If you'd like to continue on your path of Tantra and Yoga, be sure to visit the description of this podcast where you'll find a link to a free Tantra course on Mantra Meditation an in-depth Tantra meditation course, our community membership, as well as our teacher trainings. We have 200, 300, and 500 hour certified Yoga Alliance trainings that blend traditional and contemporary methods so that you can learn and teach authentic yoga in the modern world. We hope to see you at our school. Hari Om.